In this update, we've got a fairly significant trough that will be kicking off several rounds of severe weather. Once that's able to move out of the way, then a much cooler air mass follows. And actually, it's got legs and it's going to bring it all the way down into the deep south by your Labor Day. So let's break down the details for you. In this update, you can see this kind of heat dome that's still pretty much locked over the central and northern U.S. In fact, that heat is well elevated now, lifting further north, and that's going to bring some of the higher humidity values. In fact, we've got those heat advisories and excessive heat warnings for the northern plains. But you can see a noticeable area of pocket of blue. That is your trough, folks. That's a fairly significant trough. In fact, it's bringing some much cooler anomalies across this region. And it's even snowing in some of the far extreme portions of the higher elevations. Further to the out, out to the west, we do have this little easterly wave. And it's actually going to be moving at a fairly unusual direction, actually from east to west. Yes, that is going to bring some much needed rain showers for the deep south areas of Texas. But yeah, look at this, folks. There's the snow that is flying yesterday in Mammoth Mountain. Of course, this is pretty elevated, folks. This is around 9,600 feet. But nonetheless, it is a sign that seasons are changing. And yes, that cold front is going to be on the way. And many of you guys are going to be really welcome to see it. So, But here's the overall setup. So you've got this, this pocket of cooler air, this upper level low that's really building across areas of Nevada, back into Utah. That is going to bring the energy that's going to tap into this very warm air mass that's going to kick off day one of severe weather then we'll have day two and yet we'll even have a third day of severe weather as well you can see the easterly wave that's actually moving that's brought the rain showers across florida and going to be bringing you know very far extreme portions of say i-10 i-20 even further south as it heads into texas but yeah, there is your excessive heat warnings and heat advisories as the heat dome that's been pretty much locked over a good part of Texas and Oklahoma is actually lifting further north now. So now those areas across the Dakotas, back into Minnesota, Wisconsin, I mean, they're getting into those dangerously heat intense values of 105 anywhere in the orange shaded area and 110 plus what it feels like to the body that's what they have to deal with before the severe weather arrives so yes pretty intense as it, as you head to further north and we're going to be looking at some severe weather in fact this is going to just be the start of it pretty concerning in fact even today they've upgraded into an enhanced risk for some of those areas across the dakotas as some of these helicity values are getting a little bit more higher levels that's the concern for some severe weather this afternoon. So right now we do have some, some severe weather gonna be breaking out across Aberdeen, back into Sioux Falls, as well as in all the way further north into you know Grand Forks. You saw the trough out west, that's gonna tap into the energy. So today we've got those rounded showers and thunderstorms, and then even to tomorrow, a little bit more elevated threat with that in upgraded enhanced risk, especially for those areas across Aberdeen and the Sioux Falls region, as well as into Minneapolis. Those could be definitely pretty bumpy. Some big time wind producers, those 60, 70 mile per hour, maybe even some 75 miles an hour is not out of the question. And yes, that atmosphere could be rotating as well as an elevated tornado threat, especially for those areas in the southeastern South Dakota and portions of southern areas of Minneapolis, Minnesota. I think that is your favorite area. If you're going to be seeing a tornado up there, you're going to be on high alert, especially if you live in those in those regions. But to break it down for you over the next 48 hours, here's so your overall wind gust, you know, as this system kind of moves across from, you know, west to east here. And whenever you see these kind of ribs shaded areas, that's where those higher winds could be really starting to elevate as those supercells start to form kind of a bow echo and whenever they do those winds do likely pick up and you can see the graph here actually maxes out a potential 95 miles an hour let's hope it doesn't get that intense but nonetheless we're looking at widespread 60 to upwards to 75 miles an hour for those areas across nebraska 
Iowa, especially into southeastern South Dakota, getting into uh, Minnesota, central and southern Minnesota, and that's going to feed into Wisconsin, you know, as we head into tomorrow. And there's your overall helicity tracks where you could see some of the largest hail and some of the upward rising motion air with the, the largest upgra updrafts that has their tornado potential. And that's why we do have that elevated threat for tornadoes in this far extreme portions of southeastern areas of South Dakota, as well as into southern areas of Minnesota. That's where you gotta be on high alert over the next uh, two days. So if you break it down on the maximum reflectivity map, you can see this easterly wave that's bringing some isolated showers and thunderstorms for much of Florida and the deep southern portions of Louisiana and far extreme portions of deep south Texas. You do have that monsoonal flow, but once it taps into some of that you know, colder air aloft and that trough, and of course you've got the heat advisories, the excessive heat warnings, so you know that atmosphere is pretty soupy. You wouldn't be feeling so sticky up there if it weren't. And that's gonna be, you know, the one of the reasons why these things with higher Cape values are gonna be so extreme across the portions of South, you know, South Dakota and back into Minnesota and getting into Wisconsin. But I don't actually even think it ends there. I think it extends even to Tuesday because we have this vorticity that's gonna be moving across. And once that does, that's gonna be lifting more severe storms back into areas of the Great, uh, the Great Lakes region. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted that area across Lacrosse, La back into Milwaukee, Marquette, uh, Gaylord, into Green Bay. Chicago is going to be in the action. Grand, uh, you know, the Grand Rapids region, the Detroit region, Cleveland, and even extending all the way into Buffalo and Pittsburgh. They're no stranger for severe weather. In fact, Buffalo has already seen several tornadoes this season, and unfortunately, that's going to be going to be one of the culprits uh you know with this with these uh, severe storms that's going to be moving across but once that moves out then that colder air mass is going to be allowed to move in and that's going to be bringing some pretty big time temperature drops especially started into montana where some lows could actually dip into 30s yeah you heard me correctly dip into thir 30s as we head into say wednesday morning Wednesday, you know, going into Thursday morning across uh, Montana, and that's just going to be the start as this is going to be moving from northwest to southeast with the cooler air and going to bring some rain showers along with it. So you can see where the cold front lies during the day on Thursday would likely be bringing more rain. This would be likely not severe by then, but nonetheless, more rain for those areas across Minnesota, Wisconsin, back into Iowa again, and, you know, it went through Kansas, and there's the cooler air that's going to be moving through and dropping all the way down to the south, and even most of the ensembles are on board now that this has been so strong that it's going to allow to dip all the way down into the deep south and bringing those say five to 10 degrees below average temperature anomalies back into New Mexico, Oklahoma, as well as into uh, Texas. And it's actually gonna bring some much needed rain, right? I mean, look at this. For these areas across the deep south that really hasn't seen much of anything over the last month, We've got several rounds of storms and heavier rains with this slow moving front. That's kind of what you need is this kind of a slow moving front because it brings multiple days of rain showers across these regions that have been desperately needed the rain and have been under that heat dome for, for many months throughout the summer. And, and it's definitely going to bring some much cooler air as of well so there's your ensemble look going into your labor day yes that's painting a picture where they're getting those excessive heat warnings and heat advisories will be replaced with much cooler air mass so that's going to be a definitely noticeable drop further further north as well and there's those much needed rain showers with that slow moving cool front that will likely hit these regions on friday then drift a little bit further south on Saturday. And then so by the time we head into your Saturday afternoon, getting into Sunday, it's still going to be draped across the deep south, much of the southeast, much of those areas across the southern, southern portions of the U.S. 
and those cooler anomalies look to stick around for several days as as most of the indications not only does it bring this cool front in but it, yes it does slow down adding to those you know added rain showers more cloud cover more you know opportunities to bring those lower temperatures further further south as well and more areas will be able to get into the action with that cool front but overall, here's the blend, the blend of the models as far as the rain prospects between now and the next seven to 10 days. So yes, you've got some snow flying in some of these higher elevations, but nothing below that. So it's pretty dry across a good part of California, Nevada, back into Oregon, into Washington, Idaho. It's fairly, fairly dry out across these regions most of the action is not until you hit further east with some of the action across the monsoonal flow and of course you'll have the activity that begins on today tomorrow and then even into to tuesday for those areas across the dakotas minnesota wisconsin and much of the great lakes and then as the cool front will drop further south It'll bring those additional showers and thunderstorms along with it. So much of the rain across the central and southern plains through Kansas, through Oklahoma, and a good part of Texas, and even the southeast will begin in the action with the elevated rain showers, you know, beginning on Friday and likely extending all the way into Tuesday, your September 3rd time frame so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update wire protect you before and after the storm